Hi, I'm wondering if I can take a look at your collection of medication? Medication? Do you think you have any in your home? Sure, please come in. Okay, great. Thank you. Let's go. Okay, all right, this way. I'll show you where I keep my medicines. So, Steve? Yep. This is where my medicine is. Oh, wow. Okay, all of this in here. Here's my medicine. Uh, okay. Whoa, all that? Yes. Oh, my God. Let me take a look. Mm -hmm. This one here expired in 2021. Yes. This one here also expired in 2021. Oh, I think that yeah, this I'm one very here, sick. These boxes look like they've been around for a while. Wow, this one's even, you can barely see it yeah. faded. Yeah. Okay, so some of these are expired. This one is 2022. So all this is expired. Do you know that? Oh, this one looks all yellow. I can't even make up. There's no, there's, it's all faded. It's gone. So I'm imagining <laughs> it's been around for a while. Are you actually taking this medication? Actually, I do use some, like okay. you know, sometimes like uh, flu or cough, uh -huh. uh, or sometimes I feel my body ache. I'll take the painkillers. Okay. Do you look at the yeah. expiry date? Honestly, no. No. <laughs> yeah. Have you taken any expired medication? I have. Yeah. Um, and I'm still alive. <laughs> You're not worried about the side effects of taking a medication that has expired? Not really. Do you feel that the medication still works when you take it, even though it's expired? Mm, maybe I tell myself it works. <laughs> Are you not worried that you're eating expired medication? Probably when there's side effects, I will probably have diarrhea or... You yeah. Know. But most of the time, actually... It seems uh, to work. It seems to work. Humaira and Oscar are two people I know who not only hoard medicines, they also have no qualms about eating those that are expired. But they're not the only ones. I did a talking point poll. Have you got a stash of medication at home just like me? And have you ever checked the dates and gone, ooh, actually this has expired some time ago. Does it still work? Help me out with an upcoming episode of a Talking Point with a few questions. We got more than 600 replies. So, 33% of you have taken expired medication, while another 19% don't even bother checking expiry dates when taking meds. So in this episode, I'm going to find out how effective these expired meds are and if they're even safe for us to take. My first stop, Pharmacy Inc a company which custom makes medication for its patients. I want to know how drug manufacturers determine shelf life. Priscilla Lim is what some may call a legal drug dealer, but she's actually a pharmacist. So I've got all this medication here. Some have expired, some are about to expire. What is the general shelf life for medication? Typically, for solid dosage form like tablets and capsules, it can be as short as six months up to as long as five years. Ah, okay. yeah. And for liquid dosage form, it's usually on an average of two years. Um, and for eye drops, it can be one to two years okay. of expiry. And you can have the compounded ones up to six months or so. You referred to compounded medication. What do you mean by that? Compounded preparations are custom made um, according to the unique needs of the patient. Uh -huh. And uh, because they are made from scratch, so they typically have shorter shelf life. But why is it that some may have a five-year shelf life versus this which may only have two years, for example? Medications go through uh, rigorous real-time stability testing um, to determine the shelf lives. The manufacturer usually will have to follow stability testing guidelines that has this kind of standard where they test within the set humidity, temperature, control. Okay. At different time point, they will test on the potency of, of the medication um, to determine the shelf life. Uh, some of them have longer shelf life because they are chemically more stable. Uh, some of them have shorter because they are chemically not stable and they may degrade faster. For instance, this one says manufactured in 2019, expires in 2021. So it's like three years. Yeah, that means um, within these three years, you will still get that percentage uh, of potency ah. medication and oh. it's still effective. 
the shelf life is different for an open product and open product. Like for example, eye drops, when they are not open, mm. they are sterile. So sterile means there is no bacteria, no germs at all in the product. Okay. So once you open it, it's no longer sterile. Meaning you open and close um, and you use it every day, um, you are introducing, you know, bacteria. Okay. Um, and therefore, you have to discard usually within 30 days. Okay. So in other words, for a lot of these products, even though the expiry date on the bottle may be for two years, once I start using it, actually, it could have a much shorter shelf life. That is correct, yeah. Different medicines have different shelf lives, and I'm told they are unlikely to be as effective after the expiry date. But why do some people still think it works? Only one way to find out. I'm sending nine types of meds to be tested for efficacy and safety. They are the most common ones we store at home. All of our samples have passed the expiry date by at least a year. The meds will go to two different labs. Those most at risk of bacterial contamination, half-use cough syrup, nasal sprays, antifungal and steroid creams, as well as eye drops, are to be tested for bacteria count. Another batch of meds, which include cough syrup, painkillers and antihistamines, will be sent to a different lab to be tested for efficacy. I'll get the results in two weeks. It's been two weeks and the results of my lab tests are out. If you recall, I've sent expired meds we commonly store at home to two labs. One lab tested meds for efficacy and the other for bacteria. I'm heading first to Stats Asia Pacific to get the results of the bacteria tests. I've sent two bottles of eye drops, two types of creams, two bottles of cough syrup and a nasal spray to the lab. They've been open for more than 30 days and all of them are at least a year over the expiry date. What are these results saying? So these results tell us that TPC, which is total plate count, encompasses most of your bacteria, mm -hmm. is all less than 10, meaning that there's no growth of bacteria. Okay, even though these have all expired, some in 2019, some in 2018, you're saying it still seems safe to use? Yeah, it still seems safe to use from, from the test results. All the liquid and cream meds that I sent passed the bacteria test, which is surprising to me because all of these meds have been exposed to the environment and one of the samples is already five years past its expiry date. I've also got the results for the test on efficacy here in my hands. We sent in four types of medicine to the lab. Two types of painkillers, one a syrup, the other tablets. Also two types of antihistamines and a cough syrup. All have expired for at least a year. So now I need someone to help me make sense of these results. And who better than Associate Professor Litter Chu? She has been studying drug efficacy for over 30 years. Prof, help me understand, what am I looking at? So looking at these five tests, four of them pass the test. It means that the drug still retains its potency, except for this one, it only says that it's 51%, 51 percent. So potency, this so this one failed. Which mm -hmm. means four of them still work as medicine. From the results, it's telling us, yes, it is. Of the meds that I sent in, the cough medicine, antihistamines and one sample of painkiller retained a potency level of 90%. The second sample of painkiller, the syrup, had only a 51% potency. That's considered a fail. Because drug manufacturers set limits of above 90% potency in active ingredients for medicines to be considered effective. It depends on many factors. Yeah. Why is it that uh, this one works, this one don't? Yeah, why? Okay, that's because maybe this is thought properly. 
So okay. storage conditions uh, is an important variable to consider when you uh, think about whether you know a, a drug would right, still be right. safe, would still be efficacious or not after its expiry date. I'm aware of uh, studies in, in state between the Department of Defense and FDA. Mm. Uh, they have been doing this series of tests, yeah. right, to extend the shelf life of their stockpile. Okay. Right, two thirds of their drug uh, still effective mm. years okay. after you know the manufacturer expiry date. But I just want to point out that all this stockpile is stored in a very controlled environment that is monitored. But not everybody can do that, right? Okay. And we don't keep our drugs in that kind of condition. We cannot extrapolate a study like that okay. to consumers. And that's why regulators out there still would recommend that as consumers, they discard expired medication. The US military had commissioned the US Food and Drug Administration to do a study on their stockpile of drugs. It showed that the stability of some drugs extended beyond labelled expiration dates. Out of 122 expired drugs tested, 88% of the drugs were deemed potent enough to be kept for at least a year beyond their original expiry date. That said, the military stockpile of drugs is kept sealed in their original packaging and kept under strict environmental conditions. Does right. keeping it in the fridge count? I met someone who has a drawer oh. in her fridge filled oh. with medicine. Oh, it depends, depends. Some drugs are not good in, in fridge. Okay. Uh, so. Look at the storage recommendation, typically in, in the box. Okay? Right. Usually they will tell you what is the optimal storage condition. This is based on the principle of safety and optimal efficacy. Is it fair to say then that all medicines start to degrade after the expiry date? Medications will start to degrade actually the moment it leaves the manufacturing plant. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's just the, how fast it degrades. Yeah. So I would still advise people to stick to the recommended uh, manufacturer expiry date right. to assure the optimal efficacy. Expired meds may still be effective, but if you want 100% efficacy, you're better off buying new meds. But... All the medication, you know, that we tested seems to a large extent still work. But the question is, how safe is it to take? And I'm about to discover what some people resort to to clear out their supply of medication. Expired meds can still be effective, but are they safe? All the medication you know, that we tested seems to a large extent still work, but the question is how safe is it to take? Safety-wise, it's also questionable. You know, some antibiotics like Zampa, tetracycline, okay, it's very commonly prescribed. Yeah, yeah, okay? So if you take expired tetracycline, the byproduct of tetracycline, which is an hydrotetracycline, it is toxic to the kidney. So it can cause kidney damage. Anhydrotetracycline is a toxic byproduct of the antibiotic tetracycline when it degrades. Under recommended storage conditions, it is unlikely to form before its expiry date. We sent these others to another lab. Uh, we tested them for bacteria and actually they all came back pretty much Negative for that? Yeah, because all those products would have preservatives. Okay. And preservatives create a very hostile environment uh, for microorganisms like bacteria, fungi and mold to grow. Right. Does that mean that, for example, these eye drops are also safe to use even past expiry date? Oh no, I wouldn't recommend that uh, for those patients who are frequently opening, closing okay. those eye drops. The chances of contamination is very high. Uh, true preservative can, uh, provides hostile environment so that microorganism won't grow. But when you have too much contaminations, the preservative will not be able to handle it too. Okay. You don't want to risk that. You know, you don't want to play with your eyes, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there are ways to tell if your meds need to be discarded immediately. 
You can do physical inspection, you know, you can maybe smell it. Smells do uh, give us an indication, like for example, you know, if you have aspirin at home yeah. and you have left it for a long time okay. and it degrades, one of the byproducts of aspirin degradation is acetic acid. Acetic acid is vinegar. Okay. So it will smell sour, right? right? And I know amoxicillin, you can see that it's, it's also not good oh, because it's puffed. Oh, this pack puffed. is a bit, a bit right. bloated, right? It's puffed, right? And when this is exposed, you, you smell sulfur-like odour. Yeah, Steve, you tell me, what's the difference? Yeah, yeah, basically one is bloated and one is not. What about pills though? Uh, you can see from here. Oh, it's a, it's a pill inside but it's a bit powdered. That's right. So that's another indication that perhaps this drug is not safe to consume anymore. Taking expired tetracycline antibiotic can lead to kidney damage. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Other drugs can also be very harmful when they degrade. Not so much over-the-counter kind, but high-level drugs, like the properties in nitroglycerin, used for treating chest pains and heart attacks. It breaks down when expired, so it could fail to stop a heart attack. Insulin, used to treat diabetics, also breaks down quickly after the expiry date, making it less effective in treating your blood sugar spikes. This leaves me one last thing to investigate. In the course of researching for this topic, I came across online marketplaces where you can easily find people giving away meds for free or at a very low price. A lot of it are listed as brand new and within the expiry dates. But even if these meds are not expired, should I be taking meds prescribed to someone else? My next stop is at one of Singapore's largest medicine dispensaries, located at the Singapore General Hospital. As the principal pharmacist, Ong Keng Yong oversees and dispenses medication. He also disposes of any unused medication that people may return to the hospital. People, you know, donating or even selling their medication online. Is that a bad thing? Well, I guess the intention is good because essentially you're wanting to help another person with a health condition and you don't want to waste the medications, for instance. But essentially, when you're doing so, what you're doing is to skip the step whereby you see a healthcare professional who will properly diagnose the problem and give you individualised advice on whether the medication is suitable for you, whether there are any side effects to look out for. So essentially, it's not uh, advisable because this removes that safety step. Right, right. Okay, so because I've decided to play doctor on my own, right? <laughs> In a sense. Yeah. Is it actually illegal? In terms of prescription medications, it is actually regulated by the Medicines Act and Health Products yeah. Regulations. So if you are distributing prescription medications, in a sense, it's actually against the law. Oh, okay. But what if I'm just sharing it within the family, sharing it with my wife? Well, in that sense, uh, it is not something that is uh, actively being monitored. Okay. However, the same safety concerns still applies. So if you are giving away something that is available without a prescription that you can just buy off the shelf, like paracetamol for instance, and you're sure that the person is taking it at the correct dose that is uh, actually recommended by the manufacturer, and that is probably fine. But when it comes to the prescription medications, then we do not advise that you actually do this. For the pharmacy-only medications, we will actually ask you appropriate questions to assess if this is something that is not serious, you can treat on your own, or is it something that may uh, have an underlying issue that you need to be assessed by a doctor for a proper diagnosis. And in terms of self-treatment, we also do not recommend patients to self-treat for too long. In general, if the condition does not improve after a few days or maybe one to two weeks, then we recommend a full assessment by a healthcare professional like a doctor so okay. that we do not end up masking the symptom and hiding a bigger problem that is not discovered. Ah, what do you mean by masking? So in an extreme example, maybe someone has uh, some gastric discomfort. Yeah. Okay, so they purchase some uh, over-the-counter or pharmacy-only medications mm. to relieve the gastric discomfort. Okay, so it does go away, it treats the symptoms, yeah. but maybe underlying that, the problem that's causing it is maybe stomach cancer or stomach Ooh. ulcer. So I suddenly realised dosage can be different because sometimes the pills all look the same, but it could be 20 milligram, 40 milligram, or 50 milligram per pill, right? Yep. So, and if I'm not careful, I could be giving, what, more than I should be? 
Yeah, possibly. So, for instance, uh, some of the, the painkillers like, like okay. paracetamol, they come in many forms. They may contain different amount of the active ingredient inside. So, if you just remember the drug name and you do not check the actual dosage instructions, you might end up taking the correct number okay. of pills, but the actual dose they are receiving is much higher than it's actually intended for. Right. Now, many of us just store our medication at home. You know, you put it in a box, maybe put it in a dark corner. I notice here, in fact, quite a few of them are stored in a fridge. Yeah. Is there a concern as well when it comes to medication, how we keep it? Uh, by and large, the majority of pills actually are meant to be kept in a cool and dry place. However, uh, I think what many people may not realise is that the cool and dry place that's referred to in the manufacturer's yeah. instructions sometimes refers to temperatures that are around 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. And in Singapore's hot weather, you know that that's not always uh, the case. So we have done a small experiment and the temperatures at home can range anything as high as 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. Okay. So under these uh, less than ideal conditions, actually there's a chance that the medication may deteriorate faster than it should. Right. And that actually brings down its shelf life and it may not last all the way till its expiry date. I see. So when it comes to medication, it's always better to be safe than sorry. If you have expired medication, throw them away. I've also learned that medication is best stored between 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. So you want to avoid places like your kitchen sink, stovetop, or next to the oven and fridge because this collects heat. If you think storing your medication inside the fridge is a good idea, well think again. Some medication may get damaged because it's too cold. So best thing to do is to check the label for storage instructions, look for a cool dry place like a drawer or a shelf, and that's how you should store your medication.